the concerning trend of violent crime on the rise after progress was made last year. So last year, homicides were down by more than 20 percent following some of the deadliest years in the city's history from 20. Crimes were down 20 percent, man. Look at this. Think about this. Look. This is one number. They try to act like this is five separate numbers. This is one number. It's insane, man. It's like a thousand people, over a thousand people killed in this city since 2019. That's insane, man. But when you break it up to, yeah, only 170 were killed last year. Like, 2017 to 2022. But in the first four months of the year, we're going in the wrong direction. According to new police data, there were 53 homicides through April, seven more than the year prior, and on the worst pace than 2022 when the city finished with 200. And total violent crime, which includes things like assault, is also up compared to the past couple of years. There's one bright spot, property crime, down about 25% from this time last year. All right. And they did, we just saw a video of some dudes that did nine burglaries in one night. <laughs> but property crime is down 25% from last year. Unbelievable, man. You can't get any relief. It just never ends, bro. All right. Joining me here on the couch, our good friend James Clark, who is the vice president of public safety at the Urban League of Metropolitan St. Louis. James, yeah. really always appreciate your time. Yeah, he's going to fix it. Thank you. You already are me. always able to give a good perspective on maybe some of the causes that we're seeing in the community when it comes. To uh Oh, he's going to tell us the causes. Man. Oh, Lord. Press one if you think he's going to say DNA, man. <laughs> this violent crime. So that so let's start there. What are you all seeing at the Urban League that might be causing this uptick in violent crime? Well, well, Corey, it really starts within the family, and it starts within the neighborhood. In the Division of Public Safety, we use a very unique lens. We call it the NPL. We have to be in the neighborhoods. You have to be engaging families on the front porch, and you really have to be able to focus on getting resources into the neighborhoods. Uh, right, we have been negligent. <laughs> Yeah, man. yeah, this this one of the main things that separate me from like 99.9% of conservatives on this shit, bro. It's not the, the no dads in the home shit, bro. It's just not. Nah, when your dad's George Floyd, man, it's better that he's not around. Yeah, man. bro. You trying to tell me George Floyd's daughter's life would be better with him if he was still alive and around? The, the fentanyl addict? Like, come on, bro. Salute to my man Anthony coming through for the second time tonight, man. He says, Op News holding it down for the night shift crew. Yeah, man. All y'all people on the night shift working, getting this news, man. And all y'all generally getting the news, man. Support the channel, man. It's, yeah, man. It, 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 it's, it's no excuse. It ain't like, well, this ain't YouTube. They don't have a super chat. Nah, everything, man. You can support the channel any kind of, man. It's all on the table, man. Support the damn channel, man. Yeah, man. Uh, Yeah, like, I listen to Manosphere shit, and that's like their main thing, bro. It's like, oh, but see, what's the problem? It's, you know, these black women choosing these thugs, and that's why. But it's like, I just... Yeah. If you don't acknowledge that it's a genetic component to this shit, to me, it's only so much truth you can get to, bro. If you just nah, hold, no doubt. if you just wholesale say it can't be, my pop, I, I don't have a problem if you're like, I right, it can, it's a mix of both. Because I mean, right. I, I believe it's to some extent it's a it's a mix of environment and genetics. But once you just say no, it's just all environment. And it's just all culture. Then it's like, bro, you got to not get into the heart of it, bro. How could sons create an environment that wouldn't foster this type of behavior? Yep. 
Because like like you said, when you say it's environment, right, you're assuming that, well, if they had uh, uh, safe communities and great schools and we can't, we, if we're there, that none of that stuff is, is possible. That's right. They never get to that, bro. That's my, that's one of my, it's like, they th- they act like an environment just fucking appears out of thin air. It's the like, people no. people make the, the people. The environment doesn't make the people. The people make the environment, bro. Unless these yeah. motherfuckers are getting forced to commit crimes, bro, which they are not. They are doing this shit of their own free will, bro. Let, let me just show you this this story I've seen. I'm going to get back to this. But I'm going to show you this story I've seen on the gun memorial today. You know, I was just cruising the gun memorial. I, another thing, like, no one, this is the only, listen, man, I'm trying to tell you. I sampled every conservative channel, man. No one does the gun memorial. When I say no one, I'm not talking about like out of a hundred, only ten. Not one does the gun memorial. This is the only channel that does the gun memorial. But I was cruising it, you know what I'm saying? Just just looking at shit. Cause you know, I do that sometimes, because you know, um every once in a while I go and cruise it. Most of the time, I just cruise it on the channel. But I just happened to be cruising the gun memorial, you know, when I was on my free time, right? And I saw this. Man shoots and kills sister after opening fire at gas station crowd. And um, the story speaks to what you just said about like the environment and the crime that people can't like they just don't understand like here's what happened so and that does not look like the mugshot of somebody who just killed their sister um <laughs> yeah you should be weeping but whatever um a texas man accidentally shot and killed his sister in a fit of rage according to authorities the Houston Police Department said 35-year-old Richard Taplin is wanted, so he's still on the run, on multiple charges including murder, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, and unlawful carry of a weapon with a felony conviction. According to authorities, Taplin opened fire on a crowd of people in a gas station parking lot on Saturday night. Investigators learned that an argument took place between his sister and another unidentified female, okay? So his sister's, you know, arguing with this chick. He, Richard, then took a firearm from someone nearby. So he he didn't have a gun. He took a gun from someone nearby. He just, what, oh my God pointed it at the female and fired at her as she fled. Think about that. Like, what other community would uh, two girls be arguing, not fight, but arguing, and a man just grab a gun from somebody, maybe a random random gun, (laughs) and just start firing at the girl at a gas station. I mean, in front of dozens of witnesses or, or you know, several witnesses and cameras everywhere. Yeah, this is the culture. Like, come on, bro. But that's not it. While Richard shot at the unidentified female, he was also shooting indiscriminately into a crowded gas station parking lot across the street. Taplin's sister, 24-year-old Sarah Taplin, was hit by a bullet. Hmm. Paramedics pronounced her dead at the scene. So 
His sister's arguing with some chick at the gas station. There's a bunch of people there. He grabs a gun from somebody. Starts shooting at the woman. And everybody else. He's just shooting indiscriminately into the crowd. And he kills his sister. The only person he ends up hitting is his sister. Who is allegedly protected. Protecting from uh, from words from another female. Yeah, man, I just, I just never, I never subscribed to the. It was just the 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 environment that just formed on its own without any. Not a white uh, man formed our environment. Oh yeah, no oh yeah, my yeah. damn, I'm. <laughs> the fuck yeah, I'm tripping. Yeah, the white is the environment. The environment that the white man formed for us, not his, because he formed a good one for him and a bad one for him. <laughs> he yeah, man. A, a productive, safe environment for himself and constructed through years of, of different laws and in the welfare state. Tricking us. Yeah, he, he tricked us in the he tricked black women into taking welfare and kicking black men out the out the home and then and then promote their rap music so that we all could start killing each other. Like I just I can't get jiggy with this shit, bro. I just I just can't. Bro. Uh we have been negligent with that. You know, I'm always uh somewhat criticized saying, Mr. Clark, you seem to say the same thing over and over. But it's like my mother said, the truth doesn't change. We have under-resourced neighborhoods, and when you have under-resourced neighborhoods, crime and violence uh or happens two- at gas stations <laughs> people get shot at gas stations because the neighborhoods are the resources bro when you don't acknowledge genetics you just start <laughs> backflipping bro like you just pull shit out of thin air bro gas stations are dangerous in every fucking sun community man god dog two things that become accepted and expected by neighborhood residents. And last year, when we saw some of the violent crime, the homicide numbers going down in the city of St. Louis, city police credited that community policing and engagement and more targeted intervention in high crime neighborhoods. You're saying that's still the strategy, even though we are seeing this uptick this year. Absolutely. I I think that in the city that uh, Chief Tracy is doing a good job. I, I think that uh, Mayor Jones' strategy to open the Office of Violence Prevention that focuses on that focuses on doing outreach on a consistent basis in target neighborhoods. But those efforts, like what we do at uh, the Urban League, direct neighborhood engagement, they have to be scaled up. Mm. There are nine neighborhoods in the city that needs to have concentrated, consistent engagement. There are, and every single one of them is a black neighborhood. And you still can't make the connection. It's not like four of them are white and two are Hispanic and three are black and one is Asian. Every single one of them neighborhoods he's talking about is a black neighborhood. All of them. Mm. Are seven neighborhoods in St. Louis County that need to be outlined. And all of those are black neighborhoods. (laughs) So that of the 16 neighborhoods he's talked about that need scaled up resources and shit and outreach, 16 of them are black neighborhoods. Neighborhood engagement, they have to be scaled up. Mm. There are nine neighborhoods in the city that needs to have concentrated, consistent engagement. There are seven neighborhoods in St. Louis County that need to be outlined. We got to go straight in and we've got to do direct household engagement and then there are four neighborhoods over in east st louis we know where the east st louis is 95 percent black neighborhoods are we've analyzed the problem and uh for too long we've kind of been just hydroplaning over the problem 20 neighborhoods in this little area this little dot on the map 20 neighborhoods that need what where does all this money come from that you're going to throw into a fire pit 
all this money you're going to throw into the ocean. Where do we get all this money that you're going to throw into the ocean, man? It comes from taxpayers. They keep saying, they say shit like, yo, we aren't targeting these people, but when we target them, y'all start saying shit like, yo, we over-policing and start acting like we violating their civil rights. It's like, bro, you just fuck them, dog. problem we've got to go straight into the neighborhoods and we have got to be able to have individuals in the neighborhoods on a consistent basis to build relationships and we've got to begin to funnel resources in into our neighborhoods in march a regional crime fighting plan was approved by different government leaders and mm-hmm. leaders here across the st louis region when we hear regional, you were talking about East St. Louis, St. Louis City, St. Louis County, St. Charles. How important is it that we attack violent crime from a region standpoint, not just say, oh, this is St. Louis City's problem. This is St. Louis County's problem. This is East St. Louis. Talk about the importance of attacking this regionally. That, that is a fundamental problem that I've always recognized. We can't just focus on St. Louis City homicides. We've got to look at St. Louis City, St. Louis County, and, and East St. Louis and we've got to have a comprehensive plan uh, because what goes on in the city happens in the county and individuals will travel across the border. They will travel across the water. We have got to engage families in the neighborhood in which they live. So so I wish I can say that it was a deep, um, uh, a deep uh, multi-tiered problem. It's a very, very simple problem. We've got to start at the neighborhood level, and we've got to engage individuals and families right in the neighborhoods. That regional crime fighting plan has a goal of reducing homicides in the next three years by 20 percent. You think that's realistic? I think that is very realistic. That's but still it's... high as fuck, though. <laughs> and they're not going to do it. First, first of all, they're not going to. The crime rates will go up. Actually, we're going to we're, we're going to give these people all this money. The crime rate's going to go up. And at the end of the time, he's going to come back and say, well, this, he's not going to say it failed, but this this wasn't a success because you didn't give us enough money. Now we need more money. And that that will fix it. Giving us more money on top of this is what we need. They get to just run this endless fucking cycle of just saying, yo, we need these resources. And then when nothing happens, they just get get to keep saying it's just not enough and it's not enough. And we got to focus. It's kind of like what Israel does to the United States government. Well, at, at least at least with Israel. You get something out of the deal. Yeah, like <laughs> trillions of dollars in debt. No, but e- listen, listen, listen. Even you can. They keep them. They keep them people in the Middle East and check for us. You gotta remember. <laughs> no, they don't. People. They don't do a fucking thing. They sit behind their fucking wall and make us do everything. That's why we're trillions of dollars in debt over that shit. But it's going to take a concentrated. Uh, gut check. Yep. Everyone has the gut check and say, we've got to focus on the neighborhoods, the front porch, and the living room. I know that I sound like a broken record, <laughs> but I said it in, in, in 2015. You can pretty much predict what's going to happen in the neighborhood by the behavior that you see taking place in the living room. Yep. We've got to focus on our neighborhoods. We, we are, we are very mean, excited we? to now have these little niggas have parents. Why the fuck is it on the entire city of St. Louis to help these niggas with their own fucking kids, bro? Because they have God, the tax damn. dollars. Their parents don't pay any taxes. And they parent is already <laughs> bad enough. None of these niggas are putting in the pot. We got to fucking like all band together to help them take more out of the pot. Like, come on. And this money, you're better off taking this money and, like, literally, yo, 
You're better off taking this money and going down to the fucking racetrack with that shit right. and putting this shit on like fucking like the fucking fattest horse you can fight. Like I mean, like it's it's literally, yo. Listen, there's nothing, nothing will come out of this, right? Like nothing. There'll be nothing. There'll be no one son man changed in any way you're coddling this is coddling criminals yeah. he's asking yep. have a uh, strong partner coming forward like never before in the neighborhood church mm -hmm. there's a neighborhood church on almost every corner so we're excited for the neighborhood church to understand law enforcement has a role our elected officials have a role um, our schools have a role but now we're we are ushering in the day when the neighborhood church says we will be visible and we will be man um great show man great show man. <laughs> great show man great show man i mean like it, it is really nothing else to say man great show man um Hope you guys enjoyed the Rumble stream, man. Make sure you create an account, guys. Create an account so you can have, you can <laughs> chat, so you can get in the chat. Create an account so you can get in the chat, and you just don't have to um, watch, man. Create an account. It takes 20 seconds to create a Rumble account. Um, 